Good day, my friends. Welcome to the Daily Torah Broadcast, a ministry of the Messianic Discipleship Institute. I pray you're having a blessed day today, and you can always visit us online at mymdi.org. Yesterday, we continued to build on the introduction to this series on God's plan for humanity, and today we're going to dive into the first of God's holy days set apart for all of humanity. These are not man's holidays, but God's set feast, made for us to not only enjoy and get to know him better, but to understand what his plan for the future of humanity is. We can only know and understand these things through his word, and by following the examples of Jesus, Yeshua, our Messiah, and soon coming bridegroom. Remember in our last episode, I said the old covenant is the new concealed and the new covenant is the old revealed. Notice what Yeshua reveals to us from Isaiah. He says, thus you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. Hypocrites, Well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. From Matthew 15, verses 7 or six through nine. And isn't this what we have done, my friends? We have substituted God's holy days given not to the Jews, but to all mankind. And we have substituted them with our own man-made traditions and holidays. We've intermingled pagan days with religious traditions thinking it is pleasing to God when in fact it is an abomination. Do not be deceived, my friends. Easter eggs and rabbits and Christmas trees and Santa Claus and Yule logs have no part in God's holy days, and they are a stench in his nostrils. Don't take my word for it. Listen to what God himself says. In Leviticus 18, verse 26, God says, You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not commit any of these abominations, either any of your own nation or any stranger who dwells among you. My friends, it is widely known that Easter and Christmas were celebrated by pagans thousands of years before the birth of Jesus. Easter representing the goddess of the Ostra, the pagan goddess of fertility, also known as Ishtar or Astrate, and Christmas representing Nimrod and his mother Semiramis, who he actually married as his wife. Each of these traditions have been passed down and have evolved over time, but the roots are the same. Now look at what the Lord says through the prophet Jeremiah. Let's turn to Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1, if you have your Bibles. Now listen to this. What does this remind you of? Keep in mind, this was written around 626 B.C. In Jeremiah 10, verse 1, the word says, Hear the word which the Lord speaks to you, O house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, 
Do not learn the way of the Gentiles, the nations. Do not be dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the Gentiles are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are futile, for one cuts a tree from the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe, and they decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers so that it will not topple, and they are upright like a palm tree, and they cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot go by themselves. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, nor can they do any good. Sound familiar? And there it is, written by Jeremiah almost a thousand years ago, about 800 years ago. So you see, my friends, I'm sorry, 20, 2,400 years ago. So you see, my friends, when you rely on the traditions and the doctrines of men outside the Word of God, you find that things in the world are not what they should be. Now, many will say, yeah, but those are Jewish holy days, and the Jews killed Jesus, and we, we honor Jesus. Well, I'll save that for another episode, but let's be real. Jesus was a Jew. All the disciples and apostles were Jews. And the word Jew comes from the tribe of Judah. And it isn't even mentioned in the Bible until 2 Kings chapter 25, verse 25. So are you going to tell me that all the Old Testament, the Old Covenant is all about the Jews? We'll get into that in another time. But let's look at what God says in his holy word. Did you do your assignment yesterday? And did you review Leviticus 23? If you have, good for you. Let's turn to Leviticus 23, verse 1, if you have your Bibles handy. In the Lord, in Leviticus 23, verse 1, it says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, The feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations. These are my feasts. Notice it says, these are my feasts. Not the Jews' feasts, not the nation's feasts, not man's feasts, but God's feasts. Now, I don't know about you, but if the creator of the universe gives a feast and invites me to come, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do whatever it takes to be there celebrating it with him, not making excuses or ignoring his invitation. Do you remember the parable Jesus, Yeshua, gave in Matthew 22? Let's turn there. Let's see what the New Testament has to say. Let's see what Jesus himself has to say in Matthew 22. So Jesus answered and spoke to them in verse 1. He says, you know, again by parables he's talking. And he says, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call all those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. So he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen, my fatted cattle are killed and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his business. And the rest of servants treated them spitefully and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways, 
and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. Brethren, that's us. He's invited us to come to his wedding feast. Are you willing to come? That's the question. Are you willing to come or will you make an excuse and someone else will get invited in your place? Now, I know these are tough sayings to hear. But as people who profess that we're Bible-believing followers of the Messiah, we have strayed so far off course to how Jesus and the apostles walked that I'm afraid, brethren, that we don't even know what's in our own Bibles anymore. We have followed traditions of men and not followed and walked as Yeshua Jesus and the apostles walked. But I'm here to help. I'm here to serve you. I don't want your money. I don't want fame. My calling is to preach the word of God and the good news about the kingdom of God from the word. No hidden agendas. Don't you long for the kingdom of God? Do you enjoy living in this dark world? Well, it has moments of joy. But I'm ready to shed this human body and be transformed into a glorious one and spend eternity in the kingdom. But first, we have a job to do. Yeshua said, go and make disciples and preach this word to all nations. And God is in the family building business. And he wants as many sons and daughters as possible to enter in and be part of it. Remember I said in the last episodes, many are called, but few are chosen. Now let's get back to Leviticus chapter 23, because we're running out of time in this segment. And the Lord spoke to Moses back in Leviticus 23, verse 1. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, The feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, these are my feasts. Remember, we just went through that. And the first of those feasts is what? Look at verse 3. It says, Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work on it. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. There you have it. The weekly Sabbath, or in Hebrew we call it the Shabbat, is the first feast we celebrate with the Lord each and every week. They are God's feasts, not our ours, not our own. We have no authority to change what God has ordained. The word Sabbath is found 155 times in the Bible, 59 times in the New Testament. Jesus kept the Sabbath, and so did all the apostles and early believers after the resurrection. It's part of the Ten Commandments. So it must be important in the Ten Commandments, the Fourth Commandment that says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed 
the seventh day and he hallowed it. He made it holy. Well, tomorrow we're going to take a deep dive into what day is the Christian Sabbath and how did it change from Saturday to Sunday? So until tomorrow, think about the words that I've just shared with you. Pray for us. And yes, consider becoming a monthly sponsor so we can pay our bills. No matter how small, we have free in-depth online courses and classes available. And we're developing new ones. You can go to our website and see those. But time is short, my friends. And we must be prepared. Will you join us as co-laborers in the Word in getting this message out? Email us. Send us your questions. Let us know you're praying for us. You can donate online at our website at mymdi.org and click on the giving menu button. And don't forget to share this message on your social media and help spread the word. You never know whose heart you're going to touch and save their soul. So until tomorrow, Shalom Aleichem. Peace, my friends.